So one of the reasons why I interact with all the youngsters, all the young research seekers, researchers of tomorrow is because I get a lot of ideas on what are the challenges you guys face. And then I come up with solutions, I discuss with our experts and then these kind of videos are made. So today's topic is lab stress and it's very real. Just a few minutes ago, I received an email from one of the applicant of ARM scholarship. I'll not take her name because that's confidential, but she mentions that she is gate qualified with a 9.45 CGPA. But the challenge which she is facing is lab stress. Working in lab was so distressing that now she's, she fears doing PhD and instead she wants to get into dry lab or some other field. Now, this is where it's very important for all of you to realize that lab stress is real and it can happen to everybody and anybody. And it will happen eventually to, it's kind of a burnout and it, it happens to almost every researcher once or twice in their lifetime and I have seen it. It happens at least once in the early part of your research career when you are just getting started, you are in your bachelor's and master's and you are asked to stand in the lab for a few hours, right? You start hitting it and eventually that leads to a situation where you decide that, okay, lab is not my thing. I should not go for a research career. Instead, I should go for uh, some other career. Here is something which I wanted to tell you. I have done the lab work myself for hours together, 18 hours also. I have worked in uh, labs, including ISC labs. And what I learned is lab stress is real and burnout is real. But very importantly, how to deal with it is something we, you should know. Now, when you will be facing lab stress, you will not realize it will be a culmination of continuous working for a few days or a few weeks. And then finally, you'll be like, this is it. It's crossing my threshold and I must stop working in a lab and I must quit. And this kind of burnout behavior is seen in not just uh, research among researchers. It is seen in sports person. It is seen um, among people in any other profession like IT or, uh, you know, various other industries also. Now, one simple reason why this happens is because you or you know, somebody chose you to work continuously on a project, right? And that leads to the problem. It is not that you are less pas passionate about your lab work or it is not that you will be more passionate about something else. But right now, it is too much to handle. It is just overwhelming you. So one of the simple steps which I have followed in my life is whenever I had to work continuously in lab, even now also in Biotechnic, I work continuously on various projects, multiple projects. How do I do that is because I fragmentalize my time, I fragment my time and make sure that I, when I'm working on one thing, I'm working on one thing, I'm not, not doing multiple things and I compartmentalize my day. For example, there is a slot in my day when I'm going to shoot videos and nothing else. No matter even if the prime minister of the country calls, I'm not going to pick his call. Instead, I'm going to talk to you guys here right now while I'm shooting this video. So that's the same way when you're working in a lab, you have to fragment your time and you have to take regular breaks. And if you are not doing it, thinking that your uh, project guide will, you know, judge you because you are taking too many breaks, that's not the truth. See, you are here to become a lumbi res ka koda. You are here for a long term. And if burnout happens in the short term, you will never last for the long term. So think consciously, think logically. This is not the way you should be doing research. Instead, take breaks. Okay. So that's the first um, tip I wanted to give you is take breaks, compartmentalize your time, time and fragment it, group it in multiple ways. Now let's move on to the next point. Now the next point is again correlated to the first point and that is plan and organize your experiments. Many a times when you are working in a lab and especially when you're working in a group like I had my lab partner, he will never be organized. He'll keep the reagent somewhere. Now I'm, I'll spend five minutes searching where is H2SO4, right? So this kind of things happen. So it's very important before you start your experiment, you have to organize and you have to make sure that all the things which you require for the experiment are already there around you. Otherwise, uh, you are doing the titration here, you're jumping to the other, you're making the slide here, then you're running to the other room for the uh, looking into the microscope. So you have to make sure that things are within your reach. So you have to plan and you have to organize your desk before you start your experiments. So that's the point number two. Let's go on to the third point, which is maintaining good lab practices, right? So of course, there are a lot of good manufacturing practices, good lab practices guidelines, which is released by every lab. 
So if you have already got a document, please go through it and understand the lab manual, what is what should be done, what is a uh, strict no-no and how you should be behaving in the lab, what kind of um, uh, behavior or what kind of methodology is a good lab methodology. So uh, adhering to that good lab practices prevents you unnecessary stress because eventually, see on one hand there is passion, on, on the other hand there is stress. If you are not uh, passionate, definitely you will not last long. But if you could last this long, that means you are passionate. The only thing is the stress is taking over you. And when stress is taking over you, your passion goes, goes out of the window and you start you know, killing your passion. You feel that this is too much work burden. Let's just get out. So instead, maintain good lab practice and behavior and encourage your lab members also. It's very important to point out if somebody is not uh, you know, maintaining a good lab behavior because that way it will impact you. Now this person doesn't keep things at one place. He, he, he just is careless and that leads to disasters in your experiment and you should not ex you know, accept that because that's your personal growth which is getting hampered because of your lab partner. So that's something we should know. Now, the third point which is again very important is breaking down complex tasks. For example, I know a researcher so she used to go to the field. She was an agricultural scientist. She used to go to the field, collect sample, come back and then uh, put it in the fridge and the next day she will do the experiment. So why she had to do that? Because obviously by the time she'll go to the uh, uh, field and get the samples, now she was already stressed. So now what did we do here is we optimized her task and broke into small chunks. So we said, okay, if you're going in the morning also to collect samples when it is not very hot, you can always get it and uh, you don't need to even store it in the fridge because you're already fresh now and you can continue with the experiment. So you save one day. So com many times this is a very simple problem, but actually there are many complicated, complex problems which will crop up in front of you. So that is where you have to break it down into chunks and the next point will help you on uh, becoming more productive in these chunks. And that uh, next point I would like to tell you is delegation. So, you know, many times collecting the sample is not your job. Many times you can always outsource this to someone, maybe a lab assistant or, a, uh, you know, uh, somebody who may be uh, useful because many times it is monotonous job. So you can just pass it on and delegate it to someone. So delegation is a very good idea. If uh, stress is taking upon you, you can just find out someone in your team or somebody in your um, lab who can do the that part, the complicated part, and you can just do the easy part. So that's something which is very important. Now, the next point, which oh, I always suggest, in fact, you're doing it right now, is seek guidance from experienced researchers. I have met more than 17 or 18,000 researchers across uh, the country and the globe, and all of them told me that lab stress is a kind of a burnout. It happens and it kills early researchers more than the experienced ones because you start feeling that because you are in an early stage of your career, you are not really comfortable with doing experiments and the stress starts killing you. You feel that no, this is not for you. So yeah, you have to seek a guidance from somebody who is experienced in your lab. Probably it can be a project guide. It could be somebody who is a senior, just uh, immediate senior also. You can discuss that. See, I'm failing this. I'm, I'm failing in my experiment. I'm facing this problem. How can I uh, succeed? And they will guide you. You know, a quick tea break and chit chat with your lab partner or somebody who has experience they'll give you some practical tips on how to get this better and how to reduce your lab stress next point which i have for you is practice good time management now what really happens is most of us are in a habit like now i'm sitting i'm sitting i'll continuously work for eight hours and then I only I'll take a break. Unless my experiments are done, I'll not take a break. You see, my, some experiments I agree, they will have like time bound manner. You can't really uh, stop or pause. But most of them are not like that. So you can always take a break. You can take a pause, go for a tea break or a, a coffee break, you know, or if not tea and co coffee, that's not healthy. You can always just take a breath run. Like uh, most of the institutes and the labs are surrounded by a lot of trees. Just go for a nature walk for 15 minutes and then come back and resume your duties. That way, you don't lose yourself to stress and lose less hairs to stress. That's very, very important. So take regular breaks and uh, don't get overwhelmed. Now, one very important thing is... Uh, of course, uh, this I, even I used to forget when I was experimenting and I was a researcher, but this is something we should know that do not forget to celebrate small wins. You know, like you did some experiment, it came out successful. You'll be like, okay, now I have to go for the next one. But no, celebrate this, pat your back, maybe eat out, 
uh, you know um, uh, or just celebrate it among your friends or um, lab partners lab mates and sh- share that you achieved a success and let them pat you back because at the end of the day you are a human not a machine and uh, you're human first researcher second so if you do not encourage yourself on small wins eventually you will start only counting the negative side which is the stress and not count the positive side that yes you are also getting results and that leads to overwhelming situation for example i'll tell you on a daily basis i Uh, shoot around five videos suppose now three of them will get accepted two will get rejected be- i only will reject because of some quality issues suppose so now i'll feel overwhelmed that i rejected two but i should also see that in three videos i won same ways so you did five experiments today three were good celebrate that two were bad doesn't matter so that's very very important and uh, i think that's where uh, i should conclude my video by saying that you have to practice positive self talk and positive self care you have to really tell yourself that you're going the right way there will always be chunks of failure but uh, as we all know failure is uh, one step behind success you have to know this that uh, there is always light at the end of the tunnel eat right exercise uh, you know break up your time into right chunks group it at what time you are going to do what and make sure that you are talking in a positive way to yourself you're taking care of your mental health because lab stress is real and i have seen so many researchers losing out to uh, lab stress i know a student uh, he was a very good student like he secured in the top 10 ranks in csir net started with his phd and he got iac but within one and a half year he had to quit because lab stress was too much on him then he went ahead okay i'll tell you the another story so he went ahead and joined another company and this time he switched job so he went into it now and he started working at persistent systems he worked there for one and a half year again again he had a burnout problem he ha- he quit quit from there also then he went and did mba so imagine what he really did he was a talented guy he would have finished uh, his life i mean he could have uh, continued his uh, research but lab stress caused him to leave his job as a researcher as a phd scholar and then he went into it he thought he'll get money there he realized that stress is more there he left that then he did mb i don't know what he's doing now but this is what happens to most of the talented aspirational people because they forget to manage stress and they forget that they are humans so that's all for today thank you so much for watching this video realize that lab stress is real and it you have to manage it and if you are uh, facing any kind of burnout or lab stress let me know in the comment section or you can always email me at shekhar at biotechnica.org thank you so much for watching this video see you soon in the next one till then take care bye bye